relate to him as father. And so Jesus took time to explore the basis of that to us, especially when he studied the book of Matthew. He showed us how we need to relate to him as father, pray to him as father, call on him as father, expect from him as father. And so it's a new basis that the almighty now becomes one we can approach onto. I remember many years ago when my son was a little boy. And that day he came into my office and called me pastor. And he started to laugh. He must have been maybe about three, four years old. He stood at the door of my office, called pastor and started to laugh. Why? Because he felt that's what everybody calls me. But it was not really... It's something he was used to. His relationship with me was not on that basis. He saw me as daddy. So he just wanted to touch this thing every other person calls me. And then he called me pastor and started to laugh. And so what I'm bringing to attention to there is that, yes, the world recognizes. Some cannot even imagine that almighty God becomes one we can call father. Regard themselves as slaves. He is boss. He is master. He is boss. He is master. He is creator. He's almighty, but we have the added privilege of being able to relate to him as father. Somebody say, my heavenly father. I'd like you to say it with conviction and confidence. Say, my heavenly father. All right, so we need to recognize that, that he gave us a whole new way of living. Relationship with God as father, responsible to this God as father, and also being able to represent our heavenly father but beyond that i like us to understand in this season of christmas we need to have some reflections as we get about to rejoice and to celebrate and to visit and go to some special places for lunch and go to some special places one of my sisters-in-law asked yesterday that when i go to this particular city how are we going to be able to go to the cinema where can we locate a cinema in this section of the city i said oh that's uh, no big deal. This is what you can do. This is what you, I will talk with my brother, your husband, and then he'll be able to use the Google Maps so that you can find your way there. So a lot of things are lined up for today, but then we need to be able to ask ourselves the question, what is the essence of Christmas to me? The essence of Christmas is that the Savior was born. He came eventually to save our souls from sin, from damnation. He came that through his life, we can see that sin does not, no longer, does not necessarily have to have dominion over us. Does not need to control us anymore. He came to show us that we can have dominion over sin. We can have dominion over disease, dominion over sickness. We can reign in life by one. But then we also need to recognize that he needs to be the center of our lives. What is Christmas without Christ? What is the essence of eating the fatted turkey, the fatted calf, and then the reason for the season is lost on many of us. And a day like this, many people just feel they should stay back at home and watch television. Many people just feel, let me sleep longer, let me stay longer. But you see, whether you sleep longer, you go to church, or you don't go to church, there must be a pivotal moment in our hearts when we reflect this season that even the government chooses in every nation to declare a public holiday, to give time to people to stay away from work, stay away from business and shut down businesses and shut down. When you go to London on a day like this, the entire rail system, the, the, the train system in England is shut down. If you're going to move anywhere, you have to get your own vehicle to move anywhere. So some churches even shut down because there are no means by which people will be able to find their way and through the public transport system the church and so what are we saying here we need to reflect on our lives the essence of this season and amongst other things i like to say here that there should be a reflection on our lifestyles if one i mean if divinity was wrapped up in humanity not for god not for himself but for you and for me if god, the son of god could become the son of a man not for himself not for god but for you and for me, when he rounded up this, when he was rounding up this phase of his ministry, he said, Father, now restore me. John chapter 17. He said, now restore me to the glory I've always had with you. The work you have given me to do, I have finished it. All that you have given me to keep, I have kept them. And none is lost save for the child of perdition or destruction. And so if the son of God was willing to become son of man, if divinity will be wrapped up in humanity, it is important that we reflect. What has that brought into my life? 
that we reflect on our lifestyle? Is it Christ center? That we reflect on our pursuits? Is it Christ glorifying? That we reflect on our values. And values as a married man, values as a business person, values as a married woman, as a mother, as a parent, as a great grandparent. For God to be wrapped up in this sinful flesh, what has he produced in my life? What changes about my values? Are we, is it still business uh, um, same way? Is it still business as usual? Is it still marriage as usual? Is it still worldview? As usual, and so in moments like this, we need to reflect on our values. What's the value about your life? Are there values that are shaped by the finished works of Christ? Are there values that for which Jesus can see of the travail of his soul over your life and be satisfied? We need to reflect here on the impact of Christ in our lives. If he could leave his exalted place and take up our lowly forms, can we say, can you say, can I say that Christ has truly made an impact in my life? Also, I'd like to bring to our attention here, we need to reflect on the impact our lives are making for Christ. I'm a businessman, someone says. My own is business. I'm not a church person. I'm not a preacher. I'm not a pastor. But then we are saying the Son of God, divinity was wrapped up in humanity for two cardinal things. In the process of his life to model for us a new way of living in the terminal point of his life to give us power over sin and the manufacturer of sin the devil and now we are saying if he did all of, all of that for us what are we doing for him what impact are we making for jesus what impact is christ in you producing in your marriage what impact is christ in you producing with your values to life in business your ethics in your business. What values is Christ and the life he lived and the price he paid. It was enough price to live the form of God and take the form of a man. And then the ultimate price was to die for our sins on Calvary's cross. For the life he lived, for the, 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 the sacrifices he made. What impact is our lives making for him? In our neighborhood, what impact is your life making for Jesus? Amongst your family members, what impact is your life making for Jesus? In the internal thoughts and cravings of your life, listen to me, we all have strange thoughts. We all have seductive thoughts. We all have challenging thoughts. We all have wicked thoughts. The thoughts don't make us. The action on the thoughts shape us. The thoughts to commit adultery, the thoughts to cheat, the thoughts to lie, the thoughts to uh, uh, desire evil for someone else comes to every one of us. But that's not what really makes us. What makes us are the actions based on those thoughts. He said, all things are lawful unto me. All things are not expedient. Uh, I was told sometimes ago, a woman caught the husband making some funny moves. He said, what's the meaning of this? Um, am I not enough for you? How can you be going around strange women? Carry he said, uh, uh, you mean a whole man like me? I'll be dedicated for the rest of my life only to you. Uh, 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 uh. What kind of demand? What kind of expectation? You, now, are you actually serious? You are angry that I carried another woman the other day. and not, The other time I carried another lady. The other time I carried a lady on the road. Carried her to... Are you serious? You are angry. Uh, 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 uh. All things are lawful to the carnal, to the worldly. But all things are not expedient. I will not be brought under the power of men. That's what Christ came to do in our life. So we are challenging us in here. We need to reflect this morning. What has his life produced in our values? What impact is Christ in us producing in our environment? And then I close with this. You see in the passage we read, he said, wise men, and I established to us earlier on, these wise men, when you study the history of these wise men, they are called Magi, but they were also regarded as kings, meaning they had domains of influence, meaning they had subjects that bowed to them, meaning they had people who are answerable to them. They had oversight over territories and jurisdictions. But when this other king was born, 
They were willing to travel. In fact, in some quarters, it is believed they traveled as much as 9,000 miles. Well, let's take it from the low end, 400 miles. That's well over 500 kilometers to worship a king. It must have taken them days and days and days of traveling on camelback. And when they saw him, they bowed down. When they saw him, they took out of their treasures and brought out gold and brought out frankincense and brought out man to worship him. And all of these things have their symbolisms. And I'm using that to close to us here this morning. That you cannot really be involved with the Christ of Christmas without coming to you at a cost. The worship of the king will come to you at a cost. This will come at a cost to your lifestyle. Yes, you are a king. People regard you. They esteem you. They see you on the road. They bow before. I remember my wife, April, after her birthday in celebration, who was sponsored and taken to a five-star treatment in Lagos. And there was this very prestigious hotel where we stayed for several days. And then we saw this man. And as people entered the dining hall where we were, like the restaurant in the hotel, at a distance, the moment they sighted him, they were kneeling down before. I said, what kind of nonsense is this? Because I knew him as a man or quote and unquote man of God. I said, why do you have to do this in public space? So if they could do that to him in public space, in a public restaurant, in a prestigious hotel, I cannot even imagine what they would do for him in the privacy of his house, of his mansion, in his dwelling. And so you see these kings traveled all the way. They changed their lifestyles because they were willing to worship the king. And then what change has come to your lifestyle since you started to worship the king? And not just a change to lifestyle, not just worship at the cost of their lifestyle and lifestyles, they brought out. It is traditional religion that teaches us there were three wise men. No place in scripture shows us that there were three. I think the numbers were determined because of the types of gifts. Three types of gifts. But for all we know, maybe ten people brought gold. Maybe five people brought man. Maybe seven people brought frankincense. That was not declared. But I'm saying to us here, the Bible says they bowed. Kings, magi, wise men bowed to worship him. You are highly esteemed in your field, in your space. In your city, in your nation, in your family. But as the revelation of Christ brought you to a place where you bow. Where the exalted thoughts of your heart will still make you to bow. Where things that rule over your life at the revelation of Christ will still make you to bow. For God they were kings because they made the king of kings. Your enthronement in life is also enhanced, amplified and established. When in spite of who you are, are willing to bow to worship you. And they didn't stop there. The Bible says they brought out of their treasures, not remnant, not his offering time. And you know some of our fingers, we know how to fish out the 50 naira, fish out the 10 naira. Actually, we don't even mix the dollars on the other side. We don't mix the 1,000 on the back pocket. We know how to fish it out. Your children come to you during service, you fish out the 5 naira. An old fling meets you on the road. You bring out the big wallet. You bring out the checkbook. It shows what we really worship. Because they did not only travel all the way, they brought out of their treasure. Three things. Gold, symbolic of royalty. The one we've come to worship is royal. And frankincense is a form of incense. And incense is actually used in worship and in sacrifice. And so when they brought out the frankincense, they're saying, Though this baby is a king, the king, he also deserves to be worshipped. We need to make sacrifices to him. That's the symbolism in the frankincense. And then they brought out the man. The man is a bitter ingredient for embalmment. It is used to embalm the dead. So they knew that though royal... Though God, but that we can see him, we can also see his mortality. He will die. So the brother man. To worship royalty, to worship divinity, to worship one who will live. He said, no man takes it from me. 
Of my will, I take it up. Of my will, I lay down. Of my will, I take it up again. It is a honor I've received of the Father. So these three were wrapped in the king. And lastly this morning, they had a divine encounter. Don't go back to Herod. Yes, they were still going back to their roots. They were going back to their jobs. They were going back to their domains, their kingdoms. He said, but you can't meet this king and go back the way you came. Are we saying don't go back? That is not the issue. We don't have mattresses for you. We don't have conveniences. The level of opulence some of us live in, we cannot offer it in here. But we offer something, a revelation. As you change your life, that makes you go back to your marriage, but you don't go the way you came. That makes you go back as a student, you don't go the way you came. That makes you go back to your business, but your values are changed because you realize you just met a righteous king that reigns in righteousness. And so when they were told, in a dream, meaning it was a divine encounter, it was not subject to negotiation, it was not subject to discussion or consultation, they were told in a dream, do not go back the way you came. And I use that to close this submission to us this morning. Yes, you'll be going back to your workplace, you'll be going back to your city, you'll be going back to your nation, you'll be going back to your job, you'll be going back to your marriage. But the Christ of Christmas must produce a change in your life. You really met him and truly worshipped him and worshipped him with your substance and you will allow for worship that will affect your lifestyle. It does not matter how corrupted, how sinful you came before him. But he's saying to you this morning, don't go back the way you came. Now being a thief, you met the, the king. Go back to your workplace, but stop stealing. Now being a wife bitter, you met the king. Go back to your marriage. We're not saying go to another woman and prove now that you... No, go back to the same woman and let her be able to testify. My husband is a chain man. In your thoughts, the things that have ruled you and wrecked you. Go back to those same thought space and show that now those thoughts, wicked thoughts, they are no longer in charge. But the one you met in the manger, the one you met and worshipped is now Lord over your thoughts. This will be the essence of Christmas that has Christ at the center of it. Shall we take a bow? I can't go back, won't go back to the way it used to be before your presence came and changed me. I can't go back, won't go back to the way it used to be before your presence came and changed me. We all need change. Change is one constant feature of life and more so the Christian life. The path of a righteous man shines brighter and brighter and brighter unto the perfect day. That's the essence of change. And I pray for someone here this morning. May your Christmas be found with Christ. May your Christmas be found in Christ may your rejoicing and celebrating and visiting and having fun and have at its epicenter Christ the son of the living God whatever came with you this way the heralds that with subtlety have been reigning in your life and ruling in your life and using subtlety and craftiness to say, go and worship him and come back to me. Go and worship me and come back to that boyfriend. Go and worship me and come back to homosexuality. Go, back, go and worship him, but come back to stealing and defrauding people. An encounter is coming your way this morning saying, don't go back the way you came. Don't go back to the strongholds of Herod. And Lord, we pray for someone here this morning. You are faithful. And you are merciful. Whatever the entanglements, whatever the yoke of sin, the yoke of sin, a yoke to a sinful nature, that might have come with your sons and daughters, 
because we have come to worship with our substance we have come and for a cost to our lifestyles we have come all the way from various quarters we have come it's a choice we made this morning to worship the Christ of Christmas Lord we ask whatever has defied violated and, and uh, captivated these people contrary to your will we decree here its power is broken its yoke is destroyed a new me a new you a new one who has come to worship the king this morning we go back to our old species of influence or we go back changed we go back with a new root founded in Christ we thank you father we bless your name because we've prayed in Jesus name thank you my prayer that we will spend Christmas with Jesus not just on a Christmas day like this but it will be a lifestyle for us in Jesus name we want to worship our Lord with our offering just like the wise men worship Jesus when they met him they gave they brought out gifts so this morning we want to honor the Lord with our offerings and tithe if you want to give your tithe tithe is one tenth of your income we believe in tight here. So put your offerings together. If you're in, in here, and if you're online, you want to give through the account detail on the screen, let's go ahead as we give to the Lord. In honor, let's pray. Father, we thank you for the privilege to give to you once again in honor and in obedience. We ask, Lord, that you receive this offering in the name of Jesus. Cause your blessing. To come upon our lives. May our lives never remain the same again. We well, thank you, Father. For in Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. You can go ahead and give your offering as we we'll listen to the following announcement. The duty pastor for the week still remains, Pastor Matthew's one query. So let's kindly reach out to him with any information we want to bring to the attention of the church. Remember. We are receiving testimonies, testimonies, testimonies for the Watch Nine service. We want to encourage people in the house to learn how to give testimonies, to testify of the goodness of God in their life, within their space. Don't be shy. Jesus said, "If you are, if you are ashamed of me before my Father, I will also what be ashamed of you." So. If God has done something for you, testify so that you can encourage someone who is also believing God for something. So, if you want to give a testimony during the Watch Night service, kindly reach out to any of the pastors so that your name will be put down. Don't wait until Friday night. Then you start running after us. No, please. You know, because we put the programs together. So, kindly do that today, if possible. Prevailers, please holds every Saturday, but because of the 31st night, we're not going to have Prevela's Place this coming Saturday being first. So, we'll have Prevela's Place two Saturdays from now. But we'll meet every Saturdays from 6.30 a.m. in the morning till 7.30 in the morning via the Zoom platform. The meeting ID is 30, 50, 60, 70, 80 and the passcode is prayer. All small characters. Watch Nine service comes up on Friday, the 31st of December, 2021. So we're meeting here by 9 p.m. till 12.30 a.m. thereabout. Let's invite our friends, our family members as we come and cross over together corporately into the new year, 2021. Hallelujah. God has a word for us. Tell your neighbor, God has a word for us. So let's come prepared. And remember, we're providing uh, the vehicle, a bus that will carry people to strategic places after the Watch Nine service. So don't get scared because of maybe you cannot find transport out of this place when you come. We'll provide a bus to help carry people to 
strategic location where they can get uh, transportation to their homes after the watch night service. Mountain Top comes up on January 3rd from 3rd to 14th of January, a mountain top experience fasting and prayer. So from the 3rd of January till 14th, we'll be praying and fasting. We'll meet, we'll give more details. I will be meeting, I think it may likely be physical and uh, online. So we'll give more details as we get towards that. Let's also remember throughout the Sundays in the month of January are impartition Sundays. So let's invite someone Let's come prepare. Let's come expecting. And God will bless us in Jesus' name. Amen. Remember tomorrow's service. Tomorrow's service. I'm almost thinking today is Sunday. <laughs> tomorrow's service is boxing service. The service is one hour, 30 minutes, 90 minutes. The time is 9 a.m. Let's come inviting someone. And God will bless us in Jesus' name. Lastly, one of specially recognized people who are worshiping with us on the Christmas service like this. If today happened to be the very first time you are worshiping with us, can you just wave to the Lord? Anybody amongst us? Anybody? Oh, God bless you. God bless you. Can we give him a Jesus welcome? Stand. Can you stand? Can you stand up? God bless you. Do your thing. <laughs> In his presence, known and fair, building a people of prayer. You are welcome to the house of his presence, where peace and joy are found. You are welcome to the house of his presence. This is International of His Presence. Our mandate is to make God's presence known and felt all over the head using every godly means. Uh, we are gr glad that you're here in our midst today. We believe God has sent you here. God has a word and a purpose why He sent you. Our meetings, we meet every Wednesdays from 6 in the evening to 7.15 thereabout for discovery service. And on Saturday morning, like I announced, we pray every Saturday morning from 6.30 in the morning till 7.30 via the Zoom platform. But for this coming Saturday, we will not meet because it's the first and we're having 31st watch night service. But then we'll meet on Sunday morning for Kingdom Life service from 9 in the morning till 11, 11 30 thereabout. We believe that God has sent you here. If you don't have any place you're worshiping currently, we'll be glad to have you. After the service, don't be in a hurry to go. The reinforcement team will meet with you briefly to know more about it. God bless you for coming. And finally, the in reach, the church is still giving out some uh, food items. So in case you need some food item, you can reach out to the WeCare team. And when they respond behind, behind the, uh, the children church, the children church, just go and something will be given to you. God bless you. Let's welcome our pastor for the benediction. Praise the Lord. Like it has been announced, we have some uh, food stuff to share with people. If you uh, have a challenge in that regard, nothing to provide for yourself or your family members. We don't mean what you collect from here and go and give your neighbors. We mean what you need for yourself so that, I mean, the essence of this season the gift of god is not just money or gold or clothes that we give to ourselves the ultimate gift of god is that he wrapped up his son in the form of humanity and offered him um, as an eternal gift of salvation to every single one of us but here we identify with the people who may be challenged economically socially you don't have something to cook for the season. You don't have something to eat during the season. Please feel free to meet with our We Care team. 
and they have some things to share with you that you can cook and use to enjoy the festive season with your family members. Praise the Lord. I have made up my mind. Me, I want to enjoy today. I don't want anybody to disturb me. I don't know about you. Me, I made up. Me, I want to enjoy. Shall we rise to our feet this morning? Ask someone close to you. Uh, any plan to enjoy today? Or not, not only pastor? Christmas with Christ at the center also brings the benefits of joy, of goodwill, of favor, of good and goodies. And so I believe it's also a day to celebrate the goodness of God, enjoy the goodness of God, share of the goodness of God with your loved ones, visit, relax, rest, eat well. Uh, my wife said, ah, why are you announcing mountain top? Won't you even allow us to enjoy this time first? Why are you threatening us with mountain top? Hallelujah, sir. <laughs> Another uh, is even threatening the more. <laughs> Praise the Lord. So I wish every one of us a merry, merry, merry Christmas. Please help me walk up to before you go this morning. Celebrate someone around you, four or five people, and say Merry Christmas. We thank God for your life. We thank God for what God is doing in your life. Let's navigate. Bye. 